Good afternoon, friends. Today, my colleague Dimitri Fedorets and I will explain in simple terms what a CIP station is. CIP station uh, is basically a system used for cleaning in place. No? That's actually what the abbreviation CIP stands for. It's all about cleaning equipment without taking it apart, which is super important in food and pharmaceutical production where hygiene and cleanliness are absolutely critical. To make sure that your food products or medicines are completely safe for people, this kind of equipment is mostly used in food and pharmaceutical companies. As a simple and familiar example, Dima and I decided to take something everyone knows, a dishwasher. The kind of dishwasher you, you use at home for pots and pans after cooking. But at the plant, they have their own giant version. Huge pots and containers that obviously won't fit into a regular dishwasher. Some of them can reach volumes of 500 cubic meters or even more, and they also need to be thoroughly cleaned after preparing, for example, some very delicious products. A beverage or even some kind of filling for confectionery products like cakes, candies or pastries. In a dishwasher, water collects uh, at the bottom of the tank and it's filled through a pipeline. For this, several components are used. Here we can see the drain valve, which directs the water into the sewage system uh, and the pipelines through which the water is supplied. There's also the inlet valve. Uh, it opens to let water in and fill the dishwasher. Dima, um, can you show where exactly the tank or storage area for water and cleaning agents is? In our case, we have three large tanks that are designed um, specifically for storing water and cleaning solutions. And the cleaning solutions used here are um, of two types, acid and caustic. They're used respectively for removing organic and inorganic residues. Got it. Uh, in a dishwasher, we can all hear the pump buzzing at the bottom when it's turned on. Uh, it's essentially a motor, along with some mechanisms that make it work. And there's also a heating element that heats the water from the plumbing to a temperature that's too hot for washing dishes by hand. But it's exactly this high temperature that effectively cleans the equipment. Dima, so um, where are similar elements located in a CIP station? What's used for heating there? Uh, at the CIP station, we use a special pump. I've marked it here. It has two main functions. First, it prepares and mixes the cleaning concentrates in these storage tanks. Second, it sends the liquid at the needed speed and um, pressure to the spray nozzles or cleaning heads which are also quite similar to the ones used in a regular dishwasher. What does necessary speed actually mean? Can you explain how fast that is? The recommended speed of the liquid in the pipeline is, well, uh, starting from about one and a half meters per second. And how much is that in terms of volume? I'll try to calculate what that speed actually means. Um, uh, pumps are chosen based on uh, um, what we're going to wash, but usually the flow rate is somewhere between 5 and 50 cubic meters per hour. So basically that's uh, 5 to 50 tons of water being delivered by the CP station to clean the equipment. Yes, that's correct. Um, wait, does all that water just go straight to the sewer or is it somehow reused? Actually, a good practice is to reuse this water uh, typically, it is collected in one of the containers for further use. Um, well, uh, the idea is to use it later for uh, preliminary rinse uh, because it's still a significant amount of relatively clean water. Let me share a small secret. The water is recirculated both in dishwashers and CIP systems. Uh, so, in fact, no one actually uses 50 cubic meters every time. It's just the same water going through several cycles. I did the math, uh, one and a half meters per second is about uh, 54 kilometers per hour. That means the water in the pipelines moves at the speed of a car uh, driving through the city. So Dim, 
Where's the heating element located here? Uh, I've marked it. Um, the heating element in our case is actually a uh, heat exchanger. On one side, um, we supply our liquid, uh, the cleaning solution uh, using a pump. And on the other side, uh, there's steam, which um, heats um, the water to the required temperature, oh. typically between 60 uh, and 80 uh, or even 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, okay, got it. So uh, on a dishwasher, uh, we have a drain valve and an inlet valve. These are the valves that regulate the water supply to the dishwasher and the drainage of water from it. And on the CIP station, uh, where are these elements located? Uh, the CIP station also has these valves. I've marked them here. Uh, with their help, we can supply clean water uh, to our big dishwasher. Um, as we call the CIP station, um, both for preparing the cleaning solution and for rinsing. And of course, we also have a drain valve. It's used to discharge what's called the mixed phase. Uh, that might sound complicated, but simply put, uh, it allows us to drain the dirty part of the water while keeping the clean water inside the CIP station for further use in the next cleaning steps. Uh, and on top of the tanks, we see doors. Most likely inspection doors, right? Just like in a dishwasher where there's a door you can open to take a look inside. Yes, that's correct. Um, for maintenance purposes, we also have hatches here, just like the door in a regular dishwasher. Uh, hey, I'm noticing these uh, small round holes on the container. What are they for? Yes. Uh, each tank is equipped with uh, level sensors, one for the upper level and one for the lower. Kind of like in a dishwasher uh, to prevent the water from overflowing. Is this the flow switch? Yes. This is exactly that flow switch? Yes, that's correct. This is to prevent the water and cleaning concentrates from overflowing or spilling out. Oh, I see. Uh, there are still some elements left over there on the frame on the left side. It looks like there are quite a few of them. Can you um, explain what those are? Ah, right. Um, since we keep the temperature within a set range from around 60 to 80 or even 90 degrees, we use a temperature sensor to constantly monitor and um, control it uh, during the cleaning process. Also, there is a steam valve that controls the flow to help us reach the needed temperature through the heat exchanger. And we also have a sensor called the conductometer. It helps us check if we've, if we've uh, already reached the right concentration, uh, like acid or caustic used uh, for effective cleaning, or if we still need to uh, add a bit more of the cleaning concentrate to the solution. Hey, so to explain it in simple terms, when you use a dishwasher at home, you usually put in one cleaning tablet or maybe even two if the dishes are really dirty. But in industrial settings, things work differently. There is actually a special device that monitors the concentration of the cleaning agent, helping determine how much has already been added, and it can automatically add more if needed to maintain the correct cleaning strength. Now, a quick summary for those looking to purchase uh, uh, CIP stations. The most expensive components in a CIP system are as follows. One of the most commonly manufactured pieces of equipment are the tanks. And I'd say they account for around 15 to 20 percent of the total cost. Another relatively expensive component is the pump. Since it's high performance, hygienic and made of stainless steel, Naturally, it's equipped with an electric drive and usually has frequency regulation. The steam heat exchanger, depending on its size, can account for about 5% of the total cost. There's also a steam control valve, and yeah, it's usually a pricey one. Uh, Dima, can you zoom in on it, please? It might be small, but it can make up about 5-7% to of the total cost. That's because it has a very precise uh, spring on top that controls how the valve works uh, and the instruments uh, as Dima mentioned 
such as the uh, temperature sensor, flow meter and conductivity meter, uh, can also make up around 10% of the total cost of the entire CIP station. The remaining cost mostly comes from the valves, the piping and putting all the equipment together. A very convenient design is when all the equipment is mounted on a frame. This means that if necessary you can move it from one part of the factory to another. And then there's the control panel in case the CIP station is automated. By the way, there's an interesting solution for semi-automatic or manual stations, where you don't even need a controller. But we'll talk more about that in a separate video. Uh, thank you for watching this video. In the next one, we'll go step by step through how a CIP station works, and we'll also compare it to a regular dishwasher. So stay tuned, the next video will cover the solution preparation step in the CIP station. Thanks again, and goodbye. Amen.